class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to ask that you argue in a debate fashion, which means this. We are uh, currently working on an argumentative task. And so we're taking a, a very controversial issue, which is global warming. And I'm exposing students to two different sides of a debate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass out a couple articles. One is going to give you information that humans are causing global warming. Okay, That, they're color coded. Yellow, this article here simply explains to us, yeah, humans are causing global warming. It's taking place. This is what's going on. Okay, I'm going to give you this article. Then I'm going to give you a green one. The green article simply says, no, in fact, humans aren't causing global warming. Uh, but it's due to other things, natural processes. The Literacy Design Collaborative is a group of states, districts, and networks that are working hard at implementing the Common Core. And the Gates Foundation funded a group of them to begin trying to figure out how they really implement the literacy standards. The focus of our work has been on how can we create a systemic approach as a strategy to address literacy instruction grades 6 through 12. Franklin Roosevelt's administration's policies to combat the problems. It's one that's intended to be flexible in the way in which schools, districts, and states can use it. So it allows for a lot of creative decision making at the site level. The tools are a framework for helping teachers think about that and how to design their curriculum around that we can involve teachers in the conversation about literacy instruction and create a set of templates that they can use and include their own creativity in it, but know that we're still teaching to the Common Core. What three things do we need to make sure we had in our lead paragraph? Chuck, what's one? Our thesis points. At first glance, I think a lot of teachers sort of um, struggle to understand it. I could not wrap my brain around how it was going to work in my classroom. I think that it is a lot of work up front. Um, and, and to be so intentional and find the right text, I think, has been the most challenging part. But the payout has been definitely worth it. So we have our lead paragraph. Today we're going to go into the body paragraph. Once when they get into it and they realize actually how simple the system is and what the kinds of shifts the standards are asking them to make, they realize it's not really that difficult. I can present the template task at the beginning and go, here's where we're going. You know, this is our overall objective, the, you know, and everything we do ties into this. And so it made me more organized, it made me more structured, uh, you know, that we have that one big task. In your Venn diagram, you're going to write down at least four facts for the proponents and four for against. It's about making an argument for something or reading a set of texts and trying to figure out what the evidence in the text is making a claim for. Moving from note taking um, on to uh, starting a writing piece. Let's start small, let's start with our ideas, let's plan. I want you and your partner to put your heads together and think if you can add anything else to your Venn diagram. It's more man-made because we're letting off more pollution than we are than we are just sitting there standing by. We're letting off car exhaust and all that when we can take time on nice days and walk and ride our bikes. Because of the fact that they have given us a hallmark, if you will, a way for us to really be able to think about what literacy means from the aspect of the thinking involved in being literate. That has really set apart the conversation because it's opened up the fact that it cannot be owned by any one area. And this has also helped me actually teach them how to write a better essay, which I didn't actually have the training on before. I always left that up to the English teacher, and, and I see now that it's, it's up to me too. I found a unit that I would have never originally thought I would use it in, but it was over electromagnetic radiation, and I decided students love cell phones. That's their whole life. I can totally do this, and I made up a module called Our Cell Phones Killing Us. Always having a focus where they can uh, step one, so they can baby step their way to the finished product. Which is, uh, which is a writing piece. And the earth is still here and extremely happy. Students need to read, they need to speak, they need to listen, they need to be able to write. And if they can do those four things, then now they, now they have the ability to think. Natural supply of greenhouse gases. How each step in turn is practicing thinking. 
but ultimately they all work together. So that that final statement that you might make or I might make about that topic will be in a sense a much more informed, a much more sophisticated, a much more complex, but also a much clearer statement than we would have been able to make at the beginning. I think it might be humans because when we drive cars and let off gases and when we burn coal, all the gases come to the air and make one big cloud around the earth, which causes global warming. Teachers are more vested because they have a voice, because decision making around what they're going to teach and how they're going to teach it remains with them. I feel comfortable now teaching what I'm teaching, this unit particularly. Always struggled with it in the past, grasping for things to do. How do I show this to kids more effectively? Something really that's gonna be worth their time and my time. Okay, if we were gonna say that humans are causing global warming, what would you say?